Podcast. Welcome to After the Hive with me, as always, it's Jonathan Hardy. Good to be back again. <laughs> you made it two seconds before you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I had to balance the fact that you got the intro right. Uh-huh, sure. Uh, Emily Blake. Hi, guys. Uh, and then sitting in for true, we have Sam Garrison back. Hello. Hi, Sam. Hi. Thanks for uh, watching our kid last week. Sure. Question he's, mark. He's they a, had he's a, a kid. Delight. Yeah, we had a kid. Well, we still have the kid. Oh yeah, that's true. It's not a tem- <laughs> it's not a temporary situation. Yeah. You might not. After I since I babysat him, I I needed the money. I'm sorry. Black At least you're honest babies. about it. Sam yeah. sold. It's gonna be an kid. awkward rest of the episode, but that's okay. Ooh, that's a terrible <laughs> way to find that out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then special guest we have back this week, Johnny Recker. Oh, hello. Johnny, when I thought of doing a movie episode about Muppets, you were the first person I thought of. Do you like that? Does it work for you? Yes. I am glad (laughs) that my first sojourn to Hollywood when I came out here to to liberate myself from the prisons of Bible college, I had an internship (laughs) program. My options, I said, the two things I wanted is puppeteering anywhere or horror movies. And they came back with, well, do you want to work for Wes Craven for a semester? And I said... (laughs) Well, we're going to put the puppets on the back burner yeah. for a minute, uh, but it is a weirdly a passion of my life. Uh, so I was like, yeah, let's, I'm ready. Yeah. Uh, when we were going to go see the Muppets at the Hollywood Bowl, I was yeah. like, oh yeah, we'll go with Johnny and Ray. It's going to be a good time. And like, yeah, this is where we're sitting. And Johnny's like, oh, I'm paying way more money. I'm going to sit way closer. <laughs> Have fun though. <laughs> we actually, and the crazy thing to immediately start talking about my wife. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> was we bought the tickets i was like this is a once in a lifetime thing i'm spending a stupid amount of money on the tickets mm-hmm. then ray gets nominated for an emmy the emmys are the night humble brag uh, of uh, uh, yeah humble brag uh, <laughs> uh, at, of muppets live at the hollywood bowl oh, no. and i'm like no no cool cool this is the first no. worldest of problems cool, cool. yeah i know this is yeah. oh i can't go all to the muppets hollywood because i'm nominated any for of an my arguments because again all lower class based appeal audience about all my arguments <laughs> about this movie is how it's a strong great working class story all out the window like yep. this anecdote right here and then ray we sold the tickets and ray got me weirdly better tickets for the sunday so we had the craziest weekend of like emmys on saturday sunday night like close and enough i could see kermit sweat and it was <laughs> one of the highlights of my and i bawled like a child the entire time awesome. uh, it got me at rainbow connection oh yeah yeah <laughs> I, I can watch it on a 13 inch screen and still it would get me. I yeah. didn't go to that, but I did work on a guy commercial, Geico commercial with a beaver puppet, and it was kind of the most amazing thing I've ever Perfect. seen. Perfect. Because the guy never dropped character, the puppeteer yeah. the Good entire time. Don't. Like you'd stand yeah. there talking to him as a person, and he'd answer you in the fucking beaver voice. That's awesome. It was, and he would move the mouth the whole time. He was like, he never stopped, I guess, because it's easier to probably just keep going. Yeah, but you just got to keep in. It was pretty great. Speaking of keeping going. Um, so we're going to do a very quick round of plugs uh, just to say who we all are, and then we're going to move into today's episode, which will be a puppet movie battle my quick plug real quick is we always listen to venture bros uh our venture brothers podcast uh it used to be in the same feed as here uh as i told you last week it no longer is but we do have our own feed uh pretty much everywhere so be sure to check that out anybody else have anything to plug i will be joining the after the hype podcast uh, network in the next month yeah <laughs> in the um, next tentative month <laughs> tentative month um i'm going to be starting a little advice podcast because i firmly believe every question in life can be answered by watching the lord of the rings extended editions including the special features that is so a very if, niche podcast very, well no that's the beauty of it any questions so that means even if you don't believe me submit find me on facebook shoot me a message that sounds amazing uh john anything to plug real quick um i do weirdly in in the grand bending of space and time the movie that i initially was that i was working on yeah last time when i was on the mother podcast is now coming out oh. as they tend to do so september 7th uh peppermint starring the amazing jennifer garner and her own kind of riff on the taken story from the director of taken pierre morel nice uh and just an action-packed adventure for the ages coming. i like seeing her back in action movies yeah yeah um, okay, we'll do a very, very, very fast where have you been doing? Like, uh, just quick, anything you recommend so we can get in this battle nice and early. Uh, I will highly recommend that if you, I put this on Facebook a while ago, if you mildly enjoyed Watchmen when it came out uh, and you weren't totally sold on it, the fully uncut, complete with a Black Freighter animation is now on Amazon Prime for free. Uh, and it will definitely move your I liked this movie to I love this movie. If you're starting at I hated this movie, don't bother. It's not going to change your mind. But if you are on the fence, this should push you on to the side of loving it. That's mine. John? Oh, um, yep. 
I recently got the game Octopath Traveler for the Switch, and you may never see me again. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Johnny? It's 80 hours of JRPG goodness. Lovely. Um, on theme, the Brian Henson company, who's got Happy Time Murders coming out, um, is bringing back their L.A. Puppet Improv, Puppet Up. Oh, I love that show. And they're doing it now at the Jim Henson Company on La Brea. So we went last Sunday, and it's the show is even better than it was. They now do these amazing like video looping bits, like with a live video editor. So they'll do like paths, almost like sound looping, like think like Reggie Watts comedy, but with sure, yeah. puppets. Do they have like new puppets, or is this puppets? It's are... the same company, right? So it's the same company from uh, Farscape? No, you shut up, and it's there's there's like the renegade puppet troupe, a lot of which are in Happy Time Murders. Well, they're like the go-to puppet um, people, so they're in a lot of things. Yeah, they're in a too. lot of the stuff that, that they've come out. But you'll recognize some of those characters from stuff that they've done, like not the Muppets stuff, but yeah. the other Brian Henson stuff. Right. And the show's fantastic, and the cast comes out, you get to talk to them. And it's just like the one of my favorite shows in Hollywood. Awesome. I would really, really like to go to that. But, you know, having a kid really limits time. Uh, Sam, anything? Yeah, so... I've been really into queer female comics lately, quite by accident, but watch Rape Jokes by Cameron Esposito. It's way cooler than it sounds. So good. And oh then, um, most importantly, Nanette by Hannah Gatsby. Yeah, Wolf. so good also. Yeah. So those are that's kind of where my head's been at. Cameron Esposito put on a free show when I was in college when she was just <gasps> starting out. She was awesome. She is... The, she's the coolest. I feel like um, she's like if Andy Kaufman was a woman and like a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Take My Wife season two we just watched it's is up so on good. it's up on it's on Amazon, but I think it's under Stars maybe. Yeah, yeah. Emily, what about you? Uh, I finally, after everyone told me to watch it and I put it off, I waited until it ended. So you're welcome, everyone. Uh, I watched Sensate. And um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, even though the the finale is so cheesy, it's ridiculous. I I loved the hell out of it. Um, and uh, I what I loved about Sensate is no matter what uh, what you're into, not just race and gender, but also like there are different relationship styles. There's a, a trans woman on the show. There's um, there's just all these people. Everybody's almost everybody's represented. No matter what your special place in society or what special thing you're into or who you are. Um, or what you identify as, you probably have a character on Sense8 who's a well-written character, and I really thought, and it all feels organic, um, and I feel like more shows should emulate that and try harder to be more inclusive, and that's what I thought was super cool about the show. Awesome. You guys ready to fight? Yes. Sure. I brought, <laughs> Sam seems so nice. I brought a knife. Is you were wrong. No. no. <laughs> I apologize Question. for anything that happens. No, that's, yeah. <laughs> Can you kill a person with an iPhone with soft edges? Uh, I'm sure. sure there's a way. Okay, <laughs> probably some kind of electrocution. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll yeah. figure it out in the fight. Yeah, okay. where do you know? Just th- jamming it down their throat. I have a yeah. purse banana. <laughs> we'll see where this goes. <laughs> I was hoping to like chuck it because shoving it down someone's throat means you have to be a little bit closer and. Close Don't be a wuss about your murder, John. <laughs> I have a tiny Swiss Army knife, like a wee little it's, one. It's hard I to be death of a thousand cuts. It's hard to be a murderer when you're antisocial. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? I think that's like the first required like yeah, thing. I think yeah. that's... You'd have to get near people. Well, you can sneak Fair. up No. Them. No. All right, we're moving on. All right. Uh, all right, so today's episode, in honor of the Happy Time Murders coming out, we decided to do a battle about all puppet movies. And I said, pick the best puppet movies out there and figure out which one you can defend is the best ever. And we have, <laughs> John... That is not what you said. That's not what you said. <laughs> it was in the chat. Uh, Team America, world, please. Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Child's Play. <laughs> Muppet Family Christmas. Perfect. I like I, how you laugh at mine. It is legit. The Dude. Anyway. It's sandwiched between two Muppet to, Christmas movies. Oh, to be fair, best. when I was talking to Johnny about this, did I not say I might have picked Child's Play? Yeah. Yep. If I was going to fight, it was going to be on my list. I'm going to save all my ammo. Yeah. <laughs> for Child's uh, Play. But then eventually. I've I just, never lost a battle, Johnny. I don't doubt it. <laughs> is that true? Is that true? That is 100% very true. true. That is annoyingly I like, true. I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, hmm. I feel like we should start with the TV specials and move into movies. Sure. So, whose TV special? Movies. Whose TV special came out first? 1977. Uh, yeah, his did. You're up first. Yeah. All right. So you got five minutes starting now. Tell us why Emmett Otter is the best Muppet or puppet movie ever. Okay. So it's 1977. 
Uh, the Muppet Show is in its between its first and second season. It's a hit in the UK. America does not give a shit about it as much as people like to think. It's in syndication. Henson gets contacted by HBO. They make a special, right? He uses the opportunity as he's the Muppet. The early seventies Muppet specials are all great. This is the pinnacle, and this leads the way forward to everything he does. The renaissance of Henson through the Muppet movie and the end of his career. Uh, it is the first time they utilize. It's amazing story. It's based on a children's book that no one ever read, but it's a brilliant Christmas story about impoverished people in poor rural country who are musicians finding love at the holidays. It's as an artist and as a musician, one of my favorite, just the whole stories on top of that, the artisanship top notch, the whole a list Muppet show cast puppeteering, all the pu- puppet forms are there. You marionette classic style. It's funny. It's emotional. You've got a collection of Paul Williams songs that are astounding. I would say, the Muppet movie soundtrack, sure, great, whatever. Rainbow Connection is the 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 high bar, but as a collection of songs, the Emmett Otter's soundtrack is brilliant. Um, it is the only Henson movie that is, uh, they, it was the first time they used platformed up sets so that you can see the puppets standing. Jim actually has a great interview where he goes off about how he, much he loves the sets, and they're completely gorgeous. Like, it, they're breathtaking. There's water. There's, they're, they're inside. They're outside. The first time they use RC effects, which plays a lot into child's play in an, on a, on film, Emmett Otters, because they have pe- puppets in boats. Like, it is just the, the sum total of everything great about Henson. There's not a single human being in the whole thing. It is not them interacting with the outside world, which kind of starts with the Muppet movie going forward. It is them in this complete, encapsulated, perfectly realized world, telling an amazing, heartbreaking but ultimately redeeming. It's got the best artist's redemption ending. Like, fuck La La Land. <laughs> the ending of Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas is the Hollywood ending that all of us want. And it is hilarious and heartbreaking and magical. And it is the best. Like, if you were just like, I'm an alien. What's puppets? Here you go. Here's the whole thing. You're welcome. That's a great pitch. You still have two minutes if you want it, or you can forfeit. Sure. I mean, we can go, we can go, I will continue to talk. I was trying to get it all in there. Well, you, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just the idea, to, just to expound it again, just emotional moments in the midst of all this other kind of frivolity. Um, Tell me a little bit about the characters. The characters, so you've got Emmett and his mom, single mother, uh, in a Christmas story. Um, they're poor. Uh, they live on the river. Uh, their father is dead. They're trying to, they do odd jobs. She sells things and makes socks. Christmas is coming up. It's essentially retelling of Gift of the Magi, which I would say is better than the actual original Gift of the Magi, which rings very hollow at the end. But essentially, they have a wash tub where she does laundry. Emmett's got a toolbox um, that he does odd jobs with. He wants a guitar with Mother of Pearl Inlays. Uh, she's a singer who always, she sold her piano. It broke her heart. She always wanted to put a down payment on one. There's a talent show coming up. Uh, they get a jug band together. Ma decides to compete on her own. They end up selling the items or, you know, you put a hole in the wash tub to make an upright base. She sells the thing to make a dress to perform in. They compete. They lose to the most metal puppet <laughs> band ever. The Riverbottom Nightmare Band. Like, if, like the Electric Mayhem is tame compared to the this Fury. This song is about how horrible they are. About how terrible they are. And it's magic. Nightmare. Um, Nightmare band. Um, Chuck is a fantastic villain. But yeah, so they come afoul of this band of hooligans is what they are. Um, and they lose. But then ultimately, uh, Doc Bullfrog, the owner of the Riverside Rest, sees, hears them singing in their sorrow on the way home and says, the one thing y'all needed was each other and offers them a job <laughs> where the pay is regular. If you play regular uh, and they then get a job working at the Riverside rest and are, are get to work their way out of their poverty. And it's just great. The whole thing is fantastic. It's funny. It's heartbreaking. It's cr- the best, like non spiritualized Christmas without like a Scrooge deus ex machina who just pays his way out of whatever. This is people like having real holiday emotions and working through them. And it's my absolute, it's the one thing I watch every Christmas. So, and it's an amazing puppet movie. Uh, now you got there. You only five seconds left. Perfect. All right, there you go. Um, okay, so I'm going to start the five minutes of taking this down, and I, I'm going <coughs> to kick this off 
a little bit. Um, so when I was a kid and I saw this movie, I need you to defend why this is okay. The kid wants to go on a slide into the river. And the mom says, I think it's frozen enough. And then just sends her child out. This bothered me when I was a kid. Like, what if it's not? Your mom just sent you out to die. He can swim. I mean, I'm sure he could. They live it's on frozen. the river. It's frozen. Yeah, but it goes I said die. Yeah, but it, it's like instant death. He's but video otter. games have taught me anything. It's, it's instant death it's, when you go into water. Right? It's dad's Thanks, old but slide. It, right? Sam just pointed out he is an otter. He is an otter. Do you not want to win? Uh, he I, is an otter. Look, I can't fair. beat this. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> look, all I know is that according to Rockstar Games, you can't go in the goddamn water. I would also like to point out that unlike Gift of the Magi, where they sold their own shit to pay for each other's gifts, he put a hole in her wash tub and she sold his toolbox. That's bullshit. That's like they didn't even ask. That's really selfish, ask. actually. They also didn't ask permission. He just took her wash tub and put a fucking hole in it without talking to her first. <laughs> the wash tub scene in and of itself... Because all good stories, <laughs> all good stories need conflict, and the misunderstanding between these normally very loving and caring couple is the center of this. And you see them through missed notes and other things, and it's heartbreaking. And talk about like random sound design. Emmett fights back with the band, but they're like, "Your mom has the wash tub," and he's like, "I can't do that. I will. I will permission. play guitar. I will do any of this." And yeah, and it breaks his heart. The sound, just watch the scene where he puts the hole in the wash tub and the sound, like there's this screeching noise of the nail piercing the tub that is like the nails in the hand of Christ. It I is the most really I don't care how breaking. sad he feels. Yeah. Someone puts a hole in my wash tub, I'm sure. going to be pissed. Yeah, but <laughs> they they don't do that and then nothing happens and then they're poor and terrible well, and they don't They didn't fight. win the contest she either. Also, yeah. She sold the toolbox that could have fixed it. That's the other. It's like, <laughs> she, there's such there's, a futility wait, hold on. to this I mean, our, I mean, that, like, a, a point of order is that she hawks it. So <laughs> oh, okay. if she oh. won, she could have theoretically not, got it back. Yeah, okay. With the okay. money that she was going to win from a contest that she didn't win. Right. Yeah. This, and, then, and you're saying like the Hollywood ending is that they got a job. I mean, that's great. <laughs> Jobs are important. But it's like, oh, you went this out is to a capitalist follow nightmare. your dreams and you got a job <laughs> no. working at a restaurant. No, they, they got a job not... But they got a job doing what they love. That's true. They got a job. That, that she's means not that they're going to fall out of love. That means jobs. next Christmas they're going to fall out That's of love with it. Yeah. Never yeah. chase your passions. That's just but it's a, Especially what when we you're don't working see is the class sequel. and need yeah. it for your We don't see the sequel a year later where they're like, I hate singing. Singing's dumb. Yeah, but that, that's the start. It's the start them on a path. To a whole future, also, as opposed to your, 50 bucks. Working with your family is such a nightmare. <laughs> oh, they sure. do love each other like, like a little too much, though. I would this is watch... like setting themselves up for failure in a capitalist hellscape where following your passions <laughs> gets you money but kills your passions and your family also, structure it's in it's possible process. that Mrs. Otter is so into her son that it's preventing her from having meaningful relationships with other potential romantic partners. It's I mean, possible, but really as a cute, woman though. who is now financially... Because, <laughs> again, she was trapped in a cycle of selling yarn for pumpkins to make pies. She was trapped as a single mother. And then he destroyed her wash tub. And now, but now <laughs> through their cooperative efforts, she has an opportunity to build a life and a family and build those meaningful relationships. Like we just see. What's it, crazy though, is they do care a lot about each other, but there's that missed gap in communication that indicates that it's that sort of selfish affection. I mean, it is a mother son relationship. So you kind of expect that, but like, why didn't they think to team up at the get go? They both recognize each other's talents or maybe they don't, and that's the real tragedy in this. Because they had no idea. That would be a boring Sesame Street plot line. <laughs> and this is like an attempt at like you a know, real adult family also, this drama. Also, this thing has to be longer puppets. than 30 minutes, right? Like, the movie had to be longer than 30 Does minutes. Does it? Yeah, so they would manufacture a little Just bit of that. Just make a uh, cute Christmas, say, an Christmas anthology with Let's puppets. say he won and he bought her a piano. She still doesn't have a fucking wash tub. <laughs> Also, and then he, I, would say she won. Then you're not using a piano guitar. correctly. She a Can I be honest? Hold, hold, hold which is why, which hold is on, why on, the on. ending that happens is the better ending. I'm going to ask, the wash tub's coming up a lot. If they had lost, can you defend <laughs> him putting a hole in the wash tub? If they had lost. If they had lost? They did yeah. lose. Well, they did. <laughs> no, no. But they, they won ultimately. Like, if they didn't get the yeah, job, yeah, that guy at the hadn't end. come along and offered him a yeah. job. Yeah, then, then there's going to be a really sad Christmas for everybody. <laughs> no, it's a nightmare. So seriously, yeah. I watched this nightmare. movie. It's my favorite Christmas movie. The only Christmas I've ever not been with my family. I was in Michigan on a movie, following my dreams in a capitalist hellscape. <laughs> And I had skyped with my family, and then I watched this movie without people around. 
like by myself. Right. And it destroyed me. I, I, it was the most depressing. (laughs) Yeah. So the power of the movie, ladies and gentlemen, the power of a puppet movie. To make something depressing more depressing. Sure. (laughs) I'll say that was a good ending to the argument. I'll, I'll give them that. But we still have more movies to go, including the next one, which is another TV special. Yes. Oh, I brought a, I brought a Santa hat. Uh, this Good thing our audience of, can see that. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is or the, the or the puppet and the book that I brought along. Yeah. I do this love like, that you have the book. Yeah, I mean that, <laughs> that's, that's mostly amazing. for us. Yeah. Uh, okay, so five minutes to say why Muppet Family Christmas is the best puppet movie on the table. Today. All right, it's 1987. There's a lot of Muppets out there, and this movie has all of them. <laughs> um, I watched this when I was in high school. Um, with every year I would get together with my group of friends and we would all watch this movie together only we had recorded it off TV and uh, there was like a TV like a news interruption so we'd watch my friend Dave's tape until it came time for the news interruption and then we'd switch to my friend Wesley's tape because there was also a news interruption on his but it was in a different place so we'd watch two tapes and we watched all the commercials and we fucking loved it and it was great and we all identified ourselves with a Muppet and I was Red the Fraggle um, so this I would have guessed that that yeah, tracks right, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah okay so um, this, uh, this movie is about, uh, Fozzie Bear's mom wants to go to Malibu for Christmas, uh, and the guy from Fraggle, the human from Fraggle Rock wants to have a nice, happy, quiet Christmas, and unbeknownst to both of them, Fozzie Bear decides to invite every fucking Muppet on the planet <laughs> to come to this house to hang out with his mom for Christmas without telling her, which is pretty rad, uh, speaking of, you know, fucking things you do to your mom. Um, <laughs> so, but everybody shows up, even Jim Henson makes this adorable cameo, um, and everybody's there, it's fucking awesome, and there's a lot of fucks for Muppets, but, um... It, it's such a beautiful story because for me, it's all about, especially given that I don't really have, I mentioned it before, I don't really have a, a, a blood family left um, for, for you know, being bad people mostly. Um, and this movie is very much about how you make the family with the people around you because the Muppets make themselves a family. And it doesn't matter if you're related or not. We are all a family together. It's got like, uh, but every Muppet is like super them too. That's a, it's so much fun. Bert and Ernie are super gay. <laughs> um, Miss Piggy is super fabulous uh, and magical. Uh, you know, the count counts snowflakes, which is amazing. Um, and it's just, and there's sprockets there and there are fraggles and the fraggles represent other religions other than Christianity, which is really cool. They pass around this little pebble and it represents them giving gifts to each other. And even though they don't, don't they've never heard of Christmas, they don't celebrate it, but they also have a holiday around this time of year where we celebrate being uh, a, a united group of friends who are basically a family. So it's, it, so it's sort of also gives you a glimpse that like Jews and Muslims and other people of other faiths are also welcome to celebrate with us. Um, and they even go and watch the Christmas carols being sung at the end when everybody's just jamming out to Christmas music. Um, it's just this, it makes me feel really good. I watch it every year, just like you watch yours every year sure. too. It just, it, Muppets just make you feel good. And, um, and Jim, Hen- oh, oh, my favorite part is the, the Swedish chef is invited to cook the Christmas turkey and the turkey is too smart. He's just like, no, I'm not going to be cooked. And my favorite line of the whole movie is where the Swedish chef is trying to get at Sprocket. And Sprocket's human dad guy, whose name I forget, goes, I don't care if the turkey said the dog's the turkey. The dog's not the turkey. The turkey's the turkey. You turkey. <laughs> um, and then Swedish, and then the turkey introduces the Swedish chef to Big Bird. Uh, and the Swedish chef is like, holy shit, a birdie humongo. A birdie humongo. And then he t- proceeds to try and murder Big Bird and cannibalize him and feed him to the Muppets, which had that happened would have been really disturbing but it didn't because big bird's so nice that he convinced the swedish chef to have a vegetarian thanksgiving where they're eating like uh cream of wheat and cranberries it's the most beautiful and he gives them like bird seed and he's like i'm sorry you're so far from home here's a bird feeder for you because it's my favorite thing and swedish chef is like oh and it's again it's recurring that theme over and over again of making the family of the people around you and being happy with who you have and they're singing Christmas music, and it's just so beautiful, and it makes me just so very, very happy. You still have a minute and a half if you oh, want it. You can uh, forfeit if you let's want. See, wait, no, I got, I wrote notes. Oh, <laughs> uh, what else did I write down? That was awesome. Um, I just, uh, yeah, uh, this was a really cool. It's just very nostalgic for me. Um, Muppet notes. Here we go. Um, uh, bup, bup, bup. actually, I think I got to everything. Um, <laughs> Good yeah. Muppet notes. <laughs> I made, I made, yeah, did good Muppet notes. I made every point I wanted to make. Mostly just as everybody's there. <coughs> All right. Everybody's there. So we'll start the five minutes of taking it down. I will kick it off. Uh, 
my question for you is that when it comes to the Muppets, or pretty much any Henson Muppet usually, music plays a huge part. You didn't really talk about the music in the movie at all. Is that because it's all just basic Christmas music, or do the Muppets make it better? Like, I mean, the Muppets make it better because they always do. They're singing. I mean, they're singing. It's mostly Christmas music because it is a Christmas music sure. movie. It's very much about like the spirit of of being together at Christmas time. So they sing your your Christmas carols, but they all join in. Even like at one point they sing a really slow one that I'm not familiar with other than being in this movie. Um, and even the white uh, human Sprocket's dad guy gets into it and he's like, at first he was like, they're weirdos and I don't want them here. I'm trying to have a quiet Christmas. But by the time they roll around to singing Christmas carols, he's joining them and he has a very lovely voice. And, um, and you know, and Rolf kicks up you know some music on the piano and uh oh the sesame street gang when they show up they start singing carols outside so yeah there's music it's just- so one of the things you're saying all these proper nouns if you go into this movie right as like as competing henson specials mm-hmm. and you've <laughs> weirdly never seen any henson anything i think this entire thing doesn't it kind of fall if you don't oh. have any clue who any of these characters are it is it is like 50 minutes of strung together cameos no because the the human uh, well, fraggle rock guy interestingly it, it doesn't enough, know who they are either so he's our point of entry due to like time constraints and miscommunication i watched a different movie first <laughs> and then i watched this one i watched uh, muppets take manhattan sorry that was the one i initially picked and i changed my mind it's right. a better movie and, and it's a great, going from that to this it was is, like though. it's you, you went you downgraded cuz like i love christmas Whoa, music the, okay I do and, feel like and I think in the pantheon of Henson Christmas stuff, Emmett Otter, I'm always partial to Muppet Christmas, Christmas Carol. Carol. Christmas Carol, like Christmas. up there for Christmas stuff. Yeah. Like, I appreciate your nostalgia, but this is a battle, so it's got to be about what's in it for us. <laughs> and this just feels like they, they're playing into the capitalist hellscape of Christmas <laughs> by saying that, pres- that presents solve everything. Jim Henson, late capitalist. That's not... No, <laughs> present, they're just like giving presents to paper over their feud with the Swedish chef. Everybody's eating bird seed. Okay. No nutrients. No eating bird seed. They're eating cream of wheat and Some, cranberries because no one wants to eat bird. Uh, big bird. Everyone's it, all bound it's a, up. It's a also, sitcom you, clip episode. It's a bottle episode. I understand that you're trying to win, so you're the, trying to be shitty about my movie. I do think, movie. though, that this, this, this movie relies a lot. I do think it lot. is, like, the least best Muppet Christmas. I completely disagree. <laughs> I would agree. Muppet Christmas, Christmas Carol. Mu- Christmas Carol yeah. is a Charles Dickens novel. This is a fucking Muppet movie. This is I would say Emmett Otters is a Muppet movie with well, a complete original would... story with complete original characters so that you it... don't need to see or understand before you watch the movie. So is that our definition of what makes a good Muppet movie? It has no, because Emmett no, Otter is also saying, saying, an if we're, adaptation. If we're it's just a good one. Together. Putting two together. Puppet movie. Puppet, Muppet 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 movie. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, marionettes, but like, whatever. How are we defining best? We're only defining it by what is a story we've, like, what are the characters we've never seen but before. But I'm saying you have to. Because this is a new a, story. A, a story that relies heavily on other source material and that you have to we just, fully it's understand. It's just told that A Christmas Carol is it's the definition. Also, it's also, but. No, no, just but that, that tells the story. This one is also just like you have to know the other characters. It'd be like watching yeah. walking into Avengers: Age of Ultron without That's, having I already seen addressed the that. Others. The the human Fraggle guy is our point of entry because he doesn't know yeah, any of these characters. Which is interesting yeah. because, I, but it undercuts. It severely well, undercuts but here, the but story. But let, me ask, let me ask the question at the table. Uh, do you guys does the Fraggle Rock guy? Does he do enough for you? Like I, I don't under. I don't think so. Here's the thing: is I, I, these are all people who are familiar with the Muppets. Well, how is that sh- I a missed, definition? Of I anything? missed out. On I'm the, actually not. I do want to. Never heard of Kermit. No, I know Kermit, but like, there's a lot of Muppet stuff that I haven't watched. There's a lot I of haven't Muppets in this a lot movie of that I've never seen. I do want to clarify either. Clarify the earlier point. Like, as a kid, I missed out. I didn't get to watch Fraggle. I missed out entirely. I didn't know the old guy was a part of the Fraggles. And when they were there, it was like, Fraggles. Okay, I heard of them. So like, there's a nostalgic thing that was missing because I just wasn't a part of that also, TV special. Well, that's when the point. It, it also, can feels also like see a, this movie if you don't. It also nostalgic. feels like a pretty you when you it. when you remove the specialness of the Muppets, like say you don't know them, it feels like a pretty standard issue Christmas movie, like a, a hallmark a, formula pasted over Muppets. Whereas like Emmett Otter, like you mean the story that's based on the gift of the Magi. That's a, but it takes it it's to a, a concept. different place. Okay. Like these yeah. are, these <laughs> We're are all saying like originality is the standard here. I didn't, I would never ever say that about anything ever because Emmett Otter is an adaptation. What I'm saying of is Of a book like, no one read. But you have to know <laughs> Kermit the Frog on your lunchbox to actually truly appreciate the nostalgic value of the Muppet family And the Christmas. movie also, it has nostalgic value for me. That isn't all the value that it has. 
It is also a really awesome feel-good movie about some people making a family together, which is the point of the story. So it doesn't matter if you've seen Muppets or not. You see these weirdos, as the Fraggle Rock guy, I really wish I knew his name, calls them, and then by the end of the movie... It's Doc, by the way. Okay, thank you. And, they, and by, the, by the end of the movie, he's come to be like, oh, they're pretty Savage. cool and I like them, which is the point. You All don't right. have to know them. That's the second battle in a row where the ending was the strongest part. This is getting difficult. Uh, all right, so that is the end of our Muppet-themed puppet movies. Sure. Uh, so we're going to be moving on to... Uh, ruined Christmas for me. <laughs> you both ruined Christmas for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spend with a bunch of people that I don't like or I don't want to be depressed. I don't know. <laughs> don't like? That's Well, I'm trying to be in the character. Right, whatever. I, if that was my house at Christmas, I'd be the happiest person alive. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'd be Fozzie's mom. Get me to Malibu. Actually, by the end of the movie, she's fine with it. Well, Your friends that. are weird. Yeah. They're but weird. I like it. No, she's like, they're weirdos, Fozzie, but they're nice weirdos. They're nice weirdos. Wait, oh. who's Fozzie? <laughs> Moving on. He's the, guy who, <laughs> so, he's the guy who lives in the finger. <laughs> We're going to come up at Treasure Island. I got it. <laughs> Mr. Bibble. Uh, I almost uh, picked so, that one. <laughs> so you would have lost. Uh, that would have been a tough stretch. I do uh, not like Muppet uh, Oh, what is wrong with Jim you? Jim and Jim, 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 Jim. That is my least favorite. I've never, oh, I've never a seen little kid. It. Yeah. No, anyhow, sorry, no, sorry. anyhow, Cabin anyhow we need to move on to the next puppet movie, which, going chronologically, is going to be Child's Play. Oh, God. Sweet. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> go. All right, so my movie has a good mom. Um, She... <laughs> She really uh, and seen. <laughs> I'll for for the rest of my time. No, so, okay, so Child's Play is something that um, I have like no nostalgic interest in. I watched it for the first time six months ago, and it blew my mind how awesome it was. Um, so it was so cool. It was not at all what I was expecting. This sweet little kid living in Chicago with a single mom who's like really scrimping to make his birthday awesome. She buys like a, a jacked uh, child's uh, my buddy doll knockoff. Um, from a peddler on the street. Turns out this doll has been possessed by the spirit of a strangu strangling serial killer, Charles Lee Ray, played and later voiced by Brad Dourif, our dear worm tongue. Um, anyway. I think I'm so, the doctor from Deadwood. Yeah. But he's just like, so this, this guy not only knows strangulation, but he's practiced voodoo enough to be able to transfer his fucking consciousness <laughs> into a doll. Which then reveals himself to this six-year-old kid and wreaks havoc, going on a killing spree, trying to find his partner in crime who betrayed him and the cop that shot and killed him, played by Chris Sarandon, better known as Count Rugen. This cast is fucking great. <laughs> and Humperdinck. Uh, <laughs> Humperdinck, Humperdinck, right, yeah. right, right. Um, Humperdinck, Humperdinck. Um, anyway, so, cast is fucking great. It takes place in Chicago and in, like, the grimy parts of Chicago that, like, you kind of want to stay in, not the boring parts that close at 8 p.m. So, anyway... It's great. The puppetry is incredible. It uses a combination of like RC puppetry, actual puppets, um, and little people and children in costumes. So it's like an Ewok, except <laughs> murderous. <laughs> um, and what's really cool too is like if we're talking about like families and like family bonds, the mom, even though she doesn't believe her kid at first when he's saying that Chucky talks, she she knows that something's wrong because she loves her little kid. So after he, he gets taken from her, she goes and she tries to investigate, like, what the hell power does this doll have over my son? I know he's not a psychopath. So she trusts her son enough to do further investigating. She's not a bad horror movie parent, right? And then when the doll talks to her without the batteries and she drops him on the floor, it is so legitimately scary when she goes to look for him. And it's it's great. It's great to see a doll just, like, Something that, like, is, like, unsettling for most of us in a way that we can't place, like, actually be made scary. So great. The fact that they return to the voodoo roots, that it's not a one-off, and they visit the the guy that taught Ch uh, Charles his voodoo, and then Chucky kills him with his own voodoo doll is so <laughs> great! Because they, they, like, keep up with the witchcraft of the, the thing. I love, like, witchcraft shit. Um, <laughs> so it's just great. Um, yeah, and then the fact that they manage to, like wrestle a doll the, this doll is so strong too like the strength ratio of this doll is incredible um so that's cool um <laughs> the guy that's the the bonus cop played by tommy swordlow who's writing a movie i'm working on right now he's dope um <laughs> i don't know 
know, but like realistically, like as far as puppet movies go, it's kind of neat to see it go in a direction that genuinely is not for kids. Like having a swearing filth puppet that's not shitting on faces, John. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, we're getting it, to that. It goes exactly to where an adult puppet should go, which is to unsettle and disturb us in a way that's like like still kind of fun you know and it spawn off what like eight campy sequels i've seen about half of them at this point i think it might be my new horror my new favorite horror franchise after final destination <laughs> you're like rolling your eyes right now <laughs> oh i'm just waiting <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i don't know I, it's a great it's a great horror comedy it's a it was such a delight to discover this film later in life before it could really i think it would have really disturbed me as a child which i appreciate um it furthers my my crusade that all gingers are soulless weirdos no offense uh gingers out there it's just my beard my lower face is <laughs> i know soulless. You two are just like... i'm hiding it too yeah. <laughs> you know. my chin is offended but whatever but yeah like it it furthers my own personal fear of gingers which is is fine i like i like that confirmation bias <laughs> um the little kid not a great actor but not annoying he's like genuinely kiddish which is great um, see last week's wrinkle in time yeah. Well, okay, but you, yeah. I mean, or like, don't. You, you know don't how some, to. you know how some little kids are like bad actors, but they're bad, and you want to punch them. This little kid's like do. bad, <laughs> and he's just like cute. He's not like the kid in Beethoven that you really hated. I fucking hate that kid. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. We We're all on know. We're the same wavelength right now. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. It's canon. Um, Brian much, hates that kid from Beethoven yeah. so much. How much time do I got left? It's Fifteen seconds. But, okay, I'm good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, fuck that kid from Beethoven. I hate him so much. He's listening the only to the kid who's a little right bit now, worse, and he's super sad. I'm fine with that. The only kid who's a little bit worse is the kid from last week's Wrinkle in Time. Fuck that kid too. Anyhow, wow. um, savage. Yeah. Oh, talk that about those kid. past hot takes. Yeah, that kid. Uh, that already happened. It did a week ago. <laughs> You're ruining the illusion, yeah, so John. This is two weeks in a row, we talked about <laughs> the this words kid. I said were very factual. <laughs> Do not read anything into the tone of voice. Five minutes to say why this is not the best puppet movie on the table. Oh, can I start? <laughs> can I start? Please, please do. Okay. So, this is the only movie I had of these that I felt that I needed to rewatch because I wanted to dissuade myself of nostalgic preconceptions of it. So, of the, I counted, of the 123 minute runtime, there is, I'm being very generous here. There is 11 minutes and 37 seconds of actual puppeteering in this movie. One in three of those shots and those sequences is, is Ed Gale, who you may know as Howard the Duck, a human being in a costume. Or it is a doll that is not doing anything. So we're talking about puppet movies, which is the art of puppeteering. And there's maybe a 10 minute, because people are ragging on us for being these like 50 minute TV specials. There's 10 minutes of puppet. You could this do a super cut puppets of puppets shit. that wouldn't warrant like a YouTube commercial. <laughs> like it is not the best. I would let's I would do a quick in these five minutes, a mini battle that it's not the best horror puppet movie <laughs> up against Meet the Feebles, The Thing and Gremlins. I, I would do that. Meet the oh, Feebles. I just I almost did Meet the Feebles, too. But like, great. And, like, and honestly, even up against other Chucky movies, like there's, I, I, so can't, I just wanted to watch right. it again. <laughs> it's, I just like it. I never, <laughs> I've never seen it until two days ago. Last night. You're welcome. Then. Yesterday. <laughs> See, I watched I, it yesterday. Mine is the only, like, this is the only entry that did a good deed. I introduced Emily to I, child. I don't play. watch horror movies. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the rest um, of them aren't. So, so here, here was my big complaint: is there's like no backstory to this guy. He just is evil. And there's like he had a partner who's a voodoo guy, well, no, but that's, that's that's bullshit. The I don't hate that because Michael Myers is the well, best horror movie I got, villain. But uh, yeah. Jason we, Voorhees. We yeah. have a cop. We have a cop who <laughs> Chucky. <laughs> We have a cop. Swedish chef. No, never mind. It's my nightmare. <laughs> who chased him into nightmare? Who chased him into a, a toy store, and then, uh, and then like he becomes a voodoo doll, and later on he finds out like more about it, and then he goes, "Oh, I looked him up. He used to have a partner." And you're like, "What? Well, what? You? The beginning of the movie made it look like you guys had like a vendetta against each other. You don't even know who this fucking guy is. No, he just, just shot him. Tour. Like, of course you want to go after but the guy who what shot I'm him. Saying and he was like a notorious it would strangler. Be a stronger... So much talk then about why do you people have to look him up? and not puppets. <laughs> My We're point talking is, all about I want to talk people. about the quality of the film. <laughs> yeah. um, and one of my biggest complaints is that there was an opportunity there to give us a real vendetta between these two guys, a history, some kind of thing that made us invested a little bit better in their... In, How in are you their... not invested in a, a grown-ass cop going after a doll? Eh, That's dope. He's Prince Humperdinck. Anyway, 
Um, the dog I just is barely a puppet. And the dog is, and the, the but to the be fair, is when he is a puppet, it's really great. Eh. I mean, and it's it like, looks, and it's also like early versions of mocap. I was it, learning it did, about. I will admit, the like the effects stuff. look pretty good. That's but pretty neat when they use them. But uh, it gave also, us Gollum. Also, this How movie cool is that this the movie. Brad I know you're trying to talk so that I don't get my words out in time. Um, this, <laughs> this movie is, has shut up, Sam. This movie has like twelve <laughs> endings. It keeps going and going, and he dies, and he yeah, dies again. Yeah, you know what? Other movie has twelve endings. Return of the King. Return of the King. This is is this how she wins? Does she just keep fucking talking so nobody? The quality yeah. of the I'm puppets like, in this I movie. I told you the quality Nothing of the about... puppets was like Jesus Christ. It's, when it anyway, is on screen, it's decent. Let people talk. Right, for let's a go second. one you at know? a time. Yeah. One at a time. Go ahead, Emily. Uh, well, that was mostly my point. Is I felt <laughs> like, I, well, yeah, it was hard to get it out um, because Sam kept interrupting. But uh, my, yeah. most of my point was that the backstory of the characters is just not there. There, there's no character development really per se um, that I really wanted to know something somehow. And, uh, also what kind of voodoo practitioner keeps a voodoo doll of himself in a cabinet that a short real fucking doll with yeah. barely I feel like a disposable, though, ah, ah, possible I feel like though can one reach. Who, one second. Finish the thought, Emily. Just that's, that was it. That he can, the okay. doll can reach the voodoo doll of the, uh, why does the guy keep his own voodoo doll around anyway? Okay. It's a security measure because he is messing with dark stuff. His his ardent followers would know where it was. He put his trust in the wrong ardent follower. Strangler. But to just, you know, to off him in case he gets too big for his britches. Right. I like that he had so a fail safe. We have 45 seconds here, and I just want to see, in the 11 minutes and some change of puppets that we have in this movie, do you think that it qual- is as good, just as good as the puppets in the other three films that are walled wall puppets? I think that the quality of the puppet in this film, yeah, I think it could compete. Like, it's a great, it's a great piece of machinery it's a great piece of puppetry when it is on screen there's no denying it it like like emmett otter with the ray stages it too was a vanguard for puppet technology with some of the mocap that it used to achieve his face okay i'll take there that. some eye rolling from johnny yeah, yeah. there's some Pretty loud eye roll i think it picked wow. up on the microphone wow. <laughs> <laughs> I what i couldn't hear you over the eye rolling <laughs> <laughs> okay i'd say that's pretty good so we're gonna move into the last movie we have here today uh Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> you got taller there, John. Ooh, uh, you picked a tough one to defend. I enjoy the movie for what it is, but I look forward to seeing how you deal in the second five minutes of this with this round table. But here we go. Team America, World Police, John. Five minutes to say why it's the best puppet movie at the table. Well, and that's just it. It's the best <laughs> puppet movie. And when I'm looking at it, I'm not looking at it as like on the plot level or the, 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 the story structure because... You know, that thing doesn't hold up, and I will admit that. So I'm going to cut that off at the pass. <laughs> what it does have is it's the longest of the movies at the table here, and that means more puppetry, more <laughs> puppetry in action. So let's just, let's just break this down. Uh, st- statistically, you've got Emmett Otter at 48 minutes, Team America at one hour and 38 minutes. You've got uh, Child's Play at one hour, 27, 11 of those as puppets. <laughs> um, up at Christmas, which is 47 minutes. So on a mathematical level, on a <laughs> numbers level, there's more puppets per. Um, what? It's data points, right? Um, so the marionettes that are in use are, I know, I, I like marionettes a little bit more than hand puppets. And it could just be that I just don't have as much nostalgia for the Muppet things. I came to them late. But marionette puppets are really cool. I actually had a marionette puppet as a kid. I would uh, be like, why is it all knotted up? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. So with that in mind, as far as being a puppet movie, uh, I would expect some level of acknowledgement of the limitations of puppetry, and this movie does that in spades. Um, <laughs> playing around with just the fact that they're on strings or hanging around as puppets, and they play with that, and I think they do that in a really great way. Um, so like the, the Humvee that Drift crashes in, it's just like they just kind of tossed it. And that level of animation with puppetry, I find very funny because I like physical comedy things that kind of break what you'd perce- like. They kind of break you a little bit from kind of the reality of it. Uh, the sex scene is if you've ever wanted, <laughs> if you ever wondered in a very minor way, like what I wonder what you know, marionettes having sex would look like. That's this. And if you watch the mm, the extended version, you get a lot more of that. Uh, so you can add that to the runtime. The uh, <laughs> The vomit scene uh, is a, a f- it's gross, but it's a technical achievement. Having a, a puppet just spray and spatter in a very gross way. It's it's interesting seeing puppetry and gross out humor together. Which if you're if you if you've kind of watched a lot of more wholesome stuff, it's 
an interesting ju juxtaposition. So I think in terms of it being a puppet movie, it kind of challenges what a puppet movie can do. And I think that's a very strong element of that. Um, the chair gag is really funny with spot woods or spot woods. Thanks, auto, uh, autocorrect. Uh, the panther trap, which is just two cats. Like, you know, there, there's all the technical elements that play really well with the puppetry and make it a kind of an exemplary technical puppetry movie. Um, so, I mean, with that all said, kind of what it boils down to is just as far as a technical level, it's a better puppet movie. And in hindsight, when watching it, an interesting thing is you mentioned how Child's Play is unsettling. This movie is also unsettling. It has a, it, it's actually kind of a, a it's now a horror film. Because when you watch it, you realize, well, okay, with people who grew up on this stuff, that's how we get here. And so, like, it's very – watching it now in the past, like, you watch all the puppet technical achievements. It's like, okay, this is really good. The set design is immaculate. All this is great. But look at all this problematic stuff. And it's just – I think as far as a technical movie goes, it's the, you know, the best out of the bunch in terms of puppetry. It doesn't even have the most puppets in it. But for the longest amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. Yeah. One, <laughs> one form of puppetry, as opposed to a variety of forms of puppetry, with both the Muppets. Will, um, I, I, I seed you back your time. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, how much is left? You got a minute and a half. A minute and a half? Let's so see what else ready. we got. Sorry, I thought he was I'm done. So no, ready. let's, it's, let's it's see fine. what else we got. Um, <laughs> People are chomping at the bit here. Yeah, no, just as, as quick uh, offensive stabs. Uh, the Emmett Otter <laughs> and the uh, Muppet Christmas movie, they're made for TV movies. So HBO. If, if you want to. Box office. Yeah, yeah. Home box office from the home. If you want to get technical about it, they wouldn't count as necessarily the proper definition of movies, even though that's whoa, a debatable whoa. point. Oh, but I'm that's bullshit. Yeah, nah. No. It's racist against Muppets. <laughs> I love Which is Muppets. pretty stereotypical for that movie. But if you want to get if you want to get into the, the exact terms, what's a puppet movie, the made for TV movie kind of strains on that technical level. It still and, has movie in it. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it strains on it. I'm not saying like I'm plan I'm kind of on the fence with that, but it strains it. It really makes me think, like, well, what is a movie Talk anyways? What's the music of this movie? The music is offensive, but it's catchy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what I... Watching it again, I wasn't expecting it. Um, I forgot that they had music in this. Because I was like... I, I it's the only thing anyone remembers about yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm that, sorry. but I forgot... like Not the puppets. I think the America Fuck Yeah was what was in my head, but I forgot all the other songs surrounding it that was like, oh... <laughs> The Freedom Isn't Free song cost a buck oh five. I was like, it's just a buck oh five. I mean, it was funny. And I don't know. There's, It's also a musical, yeah. That's all. One time I was... Uh, before we, we jump into the defense of this thing, I, I have to immediately strike one of your arguments off the table of the TV movie argument. Okay. It wouldn't have been on... They wouldn't have allowed them... If I didn't qualify them as movies. No, for sure. So that one's immediately going away. I apologize. It's a low blow, John. <laughs> I would also like to say that one time, before we a, get started. A movie of low blows. One, one, <laughs> one time Fair. I was making out with my boyfriend and he had iTunes on uh, rotate, like random. And <laughs> everyone has AIDS came on. And we just like, Perfect. that killed it dead. We were just done. We yeah. were like, we're not having sex tonight. If you can keep it up during that song, then good <laughs> on you. <laughs> you are determined. You are an <laughs> Iron Man at six. <laughs> Uh, okay, so five minutes to say why... We won't need five. <laughs> five minutes to say why Team America World Police is not the best puppet movie on the table. Sam? This movie gave me an alcohol problem. <laughs> <laughs> True story. The first time I ever had alcohol as a youth, I uh, I invited some friends over. We popped this movie on and had like a Kahlua white Russians and little pre-made bottles and got our little 18-year-old oh. asses drunk in my aunt's house. And y'all know, like, this is a problem for me now. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Fuck Team America. It's, it's also really <laughs> racist and homophobic. I mean, there's yeah. that. I don't think the best of anything, like, to get really esoteric Feels and meta like about the argument a parody and a satire which i think it is a brilliant satire it, it couched in a mediocre puppet movie um <laughs> it, of which it doesn't even respect the art form there's so many jokes undercutting the fact that puppets are weird and don't move well which i think if you're trying to make a good puppet movie you want to try to at least mask that a bit but you can't say that blazing satires is, is the best western you can't say scream is the best horror movie because inherent in a parody is that you're making fun of things to the point you have to have greatness to undercut. And I think that Team America is, again, the things that are great about it are Team America, fuck yeah. Do it in a montage, which in itself is making fun of other film tropes. It's also a South Park song. Yeah, the borrowed from other stuff. But um, I, it's just, the sets are gorgeous. I will say 
25 years after it almost looks as good as Emma Daughter, which is good for them. Um, <laughs> but inherent in a parody, I think, is that it can't, I would say Child's Play is a better puppet movie because the puppet is amazing on its face as opposed to like, you've got one style of puppeting, which is marionetting. And it's they not great enough that they even make fun about how not great it is. I think in 20, it, I just, yeah, I think in 2018, it just, the year it came out, it was about, it was about something very, very of its time. Um, it does not age well because now in 2018 with the Me Too movement and all of our paying fucking attention to civil rights and paying attention to to the language that we use and the culture around us, that movie does, it's horrifying to watch now. At the time, I remember a guy in college just kept playing that pussies and assholes and dick speech over and over and over and over. I think I watched, he made us watch like eight times. Um, and that was funny at the time. It is not funny now. Like, it's really, it's just, I mean, they call the Screen Actors Guild the Film Actors Guild so that they can, on, te- on purpose, so they can mm-hmm. call it fag. I, it just, yeah. It, it, no. And if you're like, but vomiting and sex, meet the feebles, again, like, the, the, the which could win as the dark horse that none of us saw coming, is better at all of those things while avoiding much of the problems. Like so, you can't just be like it's the one good one. It's not though. But Peter, you're comparing Peter it against, Jackson. You are. I know. I should. I, I one was point, seriously one point, torn though, between. You are comparing the Meet the People that wasn't at the table. Just as a clarifying point. That's sure. True. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. But that's the thing. Stuff that didn't even make it to the table is like better than this. We're we're distracted by other puppet movies. Like even as far as marionettes go, like any iteration of Thunderbirds, dope <laughs> as hell. Um and. Their vehicle work was way better because they weren't just chucking it on the screen, you know? Yeah, and you also need, like Muppet Family Christmas, kind of a, some sort of radial understanding of the Thunderbirds mm. to get a lot of the jokes in that movie. I also or, feel or, like there's the time period that it was written in. Yeah. 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 And while puke is never not funny, poop has its limits, you know? And they cross those limits. <laughs> <laughs> Also, like the Durka 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 thing, I just yeah, it's it's just problem. And it's now very people quote that on the other side of it, like it's or America fuck yeah, like it's it's yeah. it was so good at being satire that there's now a bunch of proud boys that'll happily go America fuck yeah, which at some point you're it like, helped us out them. Those people, those types of people. So now we know to avoid them. I mean, that's what people say when they're like, "Why are you mad that this person is racist?" Now you know they're racist. So that's not. I mean. <laughs> Trying to make anything. lemonade out of lemons here. <laughs> a- a- anything else to add on this thing? It feels like this one sputtered out pretty hard. I think <laughs> if it, if they didn't at least love the art form of puppetry, they would have just done a live action version of this. Because oh, you they can. definitely love it. Yeah. They so were I, very I think, I think, about I think it. you're understanding the love of that. I think maybe on a technical level. I think that's like, the foundational problem with most of what Trey and Matt do, though, is that they love certain art forms and stuff, and they want to use them to make these satires. But rather than learning and appreciate them, they use their own mediocrity to like poke fun at them, and it's just it ends up being like this really misexpressed love. It's they're terrified of sincerity. Yeah, and like as much as I love a lot of their work, like genuinely in different times and places in my life, I feel like overall it's just like not. Everything else at this table is coming, even even Child's Play is coming from a place of like sincerely trying to make a horror film I from would agree something with that. that sincerely mm-hmm. scares people, and that's, that's what you need for puppets. <laughs> okay. I really don't want to see any more cis straight white dudes joking about other races and cultures and stuff. Like, like, yeah. I have bad news. It's going to keep happening. I don't want to see it though. Yeah, that's fair, but you you can't keep a straight cis white man down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> America's taught Despite us Despite the fact that they keep saying that we're trying. Yeah. Why, why genocide? <laughs> oh, we're the worst. Uh, moving on. So today's, I, I, this was, I thought, one of our better battles. I am actually very impressed. Uh, Sam made Child's Play sound good when that's the weakest of the franchise. Uh, John made a very good argument for Team America, which, again, I... I rewatched all these movies, which yeah. I've not done for a battle in a long time. The only one I couldn't get to was uh, Child's Play because of logistics. But yeah, the I own all of them. But uh, it's this was just I, I did not expect such great arguments for each one of these. Um, but honestly, the two feature length films I'm gonna have to jettison right away. Uh, I would have kept Child's Play in the game, but Sam said I just wanted to rewatch it, <laughs> and that sentence right there. <laughs> Just decimated your whole argument, which was I good. I knew I but... could. I was just like, I just like these movies. And I, I went back.
back and forth on Colt and all the others and stuff, but they do incorporate more and more CGI throughout the franchise, yeah. which makes it like harder. And so. you have to have kept up with the franchise, which have been a tough argument as well. Yeah. Um, but I do appreciate getting a chance to rewatch Child's Play because I do love that movie. So between the other two movies, though, this is where it gets really tough because I think one of you argued your movie better and I think one of you defended your movie better. Uh, I think Johnny argued his movie better and I think Emily defended her movie better. But if I have to go just down the line of which one would I want to watch based on what you both said, I have to go with Emma and Otter. Yes. But it is like it's a, very a thin. squeak. It's very thin. Like if I could say a tie, well, I would. Since they're both shorter length movies. You can you watch, them watch them both. I could them watch them both. One movie. If, yeah. This is as close to me saying a tie as possible. Mm. The only inch out is just. Yeah. And as, as, as a, even again, it was hard to argue against it. No. And that was, my argument was the only really one I have was that it does base on all this other prior knowledge. Because again, you, you alluded to it and I will just like to, to nod back towards your argument and the whole thing. Jim Henson's cameo at the end of that movie oh, so it comes good. out of nowhere. Oh, and if you don't know who Jim Henson is, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't know. No, but yeah, because again, he's just there. But as a creator, he is... His whole point, and he just shows up at the end, he's washing the goddamn dishes yeah. with Sprocket. Watching and he looks fun. through the door and watches them all having a great, like your mom or your grandma or hopefully your dad. Maybe one of the dudes puts down the remote and does some dishes too. But like, as a, it's my favorite creator cameo in anything. I know we all have gotten kind of burned out on like Stan Lee cameos. Yep. But like, and it's not, it's not hidden. He's there, but he is at the, the literal service of his creation. Mm-hmm. And it's a perfect cherry and a tip of the hat for one of the last things he really did yeah. before he died. And it's, yeah. This was the only one that I'd only seen once and I really did love it. Like rewatching him, like, I, I will show this to my son every Christmas. I had never. But I, I did the same with Emma and Otter. It's like, these yeah. will be like yeah. a one-two punch. And it's weird because I'd never heard of both of these yeah. until this thing. I was like, they had a they had like, Christmas Carol, you mean, right? Or like, no, well, first it was Manhattan. I was like, that's an amazing Muppet movie. How, there's no point. I'm just going to go with the joke way to argue this. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, then you switch out. I was like, they had a Christmas one? And I watched it and like, it's hard to argue against movies like this that end up being, as a nod, like 100% positive. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you, it's hard to argue against, against positivity with anything other than like logic. Yeah. Logic and, 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 and it, it, <laughs> But it's... Or like weird like semantic pedantry or whatever. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. That's the only tools in the arsenal. But like, I... I mean, I'm an instant. I was an instant fan of Emmett Otter, having not heard of it before until this year, or knowing anything about it, and didn't even know we owned it. It was like just waiting I was, for you. Was yeah. well, I was, I was, I was most of you listening at home? You, you probably own it. Like, <laughs> just go to the yeah. You probably have it taped in some VHS in your parents' yeah. closet. Like, well, that's the thing. I was like, how am I gonna find? Because uh, of our, we have we chat our decisions. And like, right. And you didn't put a comma after Johnny. So I was like, I was telling my wife. Where I gotta find this movie, Johnny Emmett Otter's <laughs> thing. I and I was like, too. and she was like, you mean hilarious. Emmett Otter's Christmas? I was like, yeah, yeah, I, gotta, I don't know how I'm gonna find it. It's not on streaming. I was like, well, we have it in the DVD show. I'm like, what? Yeah, we bought it. It was on sale. Got it. And I was like, we have this? Yeah, the whole time. It's like, the whole time? Honestly, the only reason I remember it is because it gave me a mini panic attack when I was in elementary school going, what if he falls through the ice? Because I was always afraid of falling through the <laughs> ice. Did you see a wonderful life? <laughs> Yeah, he I, falls in and goes deaf in one ear. I was horrified of it. This yeah. was so interesting because I was uh, I'm, I just moved into a new apartment, so I was literally I've just spent the last like three days putting up shelves and putting oh, together sure. furniture. So I put all these movies on while I was doing that, and my reaction from going going from Emmett Otter directly to Child's Play was just a fucking weird. Oh, that's a whiplash. I was putting, oh, up, sure. putting up shelves. Both stories then, about single moms who really <laughs> love their kids. That's true. Really, they are good sister pieces. One just happens to be a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so moving into the end of this thing, we're gonna do another quick round of plugs just in case you didn't hear us in the beginning and then we'll get out of this uh of course for me listen to venture bros adventure bros podcast as of this episode coming out we will be either this upcoming monday or a week from monday the end of season one where we have a very long special episode where we are going to restructure season one in the way that we feel it should have been released and i'm really oh, cool. excited to do that uh john anything to plug uh, no, just uh, wa- listen to that. I mean, rate and review the Venture Bros on iTunes. Yes, please. The more the more you do that in a frequent amount of time, especially a uh, young podcast, the further up the charts it goes. And there are there you have there's competition for Venture Bros. A lot of people like Venture Bros. And when you do a search for just Venture Bros, there's a lot of options. So we are th- still the only solo podcast devoted to Venture Brothers, which I'm very proud of. Cool. So definitely mention that in the <laughs> review too, and just yep. <laughs> rate, rate and review. And it's weird, like we get stuck in this game of that where like. Yep. 
the, that's the way the internet is now. You have to just barrage people with it, but it seriously helps us. And especially when we got the new Lord of the Rings advice column one coming out, it'll and help think, get that up. And you and I are planning new ones too to come eventually. Yep. And, and we also have a friend of the show, Mari, who is working on a show as well. So we're yeah. having a lot of shows come out throughout the rest of this. And year. those shows don't take flight if you guys don't go in there and rate review. Yes. So. And they're all a little bit different. They're all a little exciting. I'm excited for all of them. The only one that has an absolute end date is Venture British because there's only so many episodes. <laughs> Until the next season comes out really soon. Yeah, and then there's only so many episodes. <laughs> yeah. Man, Corn will be like eight. It'll be great. Yeah. You can sit in on the podcast. <laughs> Eventually, you can, yeah. have, a, you can yeah. have an opinion. Yeah. The animation was kind of rough in the first season. <laughs> it got better. <laughs> they used different animation studios. They only had so much time. All right, go Stop ahead. Stop yelling at me, Dad! <laughs> um, at Johnny Wrecker on all your platforms. It's R-E-C-H-E-R. Um, sorry. Uh, in advance for my Swiss heritage. Um, again, go see Peppermint. Um, I think it's fun. Uh, eventually, uh, we'll come back at and I will sit in the corner and cringe during the after the hype about Peppermint. Uh, September 7th, if you all go see it, hopefully it'll be a big success. Jen Garner kicking ass. It's a good time. I'm so excited to see her in an action movie. Yeah. Like I said, podcast is coming up hopefully within a month. Um, working on it. I think I'm going to call it Sam Wise. Solid yes. title. Yeah. Yes. Pretty great. <laughs> um, in the meantime, you can follow me at Sammy Jane 613 on Instagram, S A M I J A N E 613, or better is my dog, Saint underscore Lottie, L A D D I, on Insta. She's She's got a better life than I do. It's a kick ass dog. <laughs> Emily? As I mentioned, I have a new apartment, and that means I have a much uh, better sewing studio happening. So if you want a cosplay, or specifically, if you want uh, a screen accurate thirteenth Doctor coat that is better than any of the coats that are currently out there, um, then you can hire me to make you one. I am on Etsy. I have a website, and I have an Instagram, and all of them are Emily Blake Sews. So Emily Blake Sews dot com. Uh, have me make you a thirteenth Doctor coat. I still have time to get you one for Halloween. Um, yeah, or any co- any cosplay. Just to, you know, hire me to make cool things. Also, you have articles on our our, our site athpod.com. Oh, yeah, do. Yes, they're we very all, good. We are. We're doing more articles now, so you should go on the site. Um, I'm Everybody. gonna do. Uh, probably by the time this comes out, I will have already done it. Now that I'm settled in my apartment, I'm gonna write a write up of uh, a probably humorous daily recap of my Comic Con experience. Cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, I also have an article that should be out now ish. I think it actually probably came out yesterday. Or next Wednesday, depending on how time works. Uh, which is why can't Marvel and DC just be friends? Yeah. And I tackle why... Capitalist Hellscape. I will mention Jim that. Jim Henson's <laughs> Capitalist Hellscape. I would definitely watch that. Yeah. It'd be awesome. All right. So thank you, everyone, so much Actually, for listening. Can, oh, sorry. Go sorry. Ahead. Can we just clarify? Every... Every Wednesday and Friday, there is a new article That's at true. ATHpod.com. Yes. yes. Which we also mentioned last week. Yes. Um, yes. So please keep reading. They're all very, pretty much different and varied, and they're a lot of fun. My favorite one I've written so far was on my Frisky Dingo breakdown because nobody fucking watched Frisky Dingo, and it nope. was an amazing. We all, show. We all so missed out. Good. We all it missed out. It was so good. Anyhow, thank you all so much for listening. It's great to be back, and bye.